Hi everyone, it's me, Michelle, and I am back with another video. Today we're going to do a Q&A. You all send me questions all the time, and I'm actually going to spend time and answer four questions today. So the first question is, Michelle, are you going to compete in another Olympics? And my answer is, yes, I plan to. <laughs> So I don't plan to retire anytime soon. I do believe that I still have some great years underneath me and I am looking forward to to attempting to make my fourth team. Now make it the Olympic team, I'm not guaranteed because I won last year. Each year when we try out for Team USA, you are starting from ground zero. You have to work your way to the top three spots. If you finish first, second, or third at the Olympic trials, you make the USA team. So that's what I'm going to be working on for the next couple of years and I'm very excited about that because it will be my fourth Olympic Games. Like gosh, when I think about that, I've made three. Like I've made three teams and I'm trying to make four teams. Very few people have done that let alone many people just try to make one team and I've been so blessed to be on three teams and about to attempt my fourth one like I can't complain about that I've had a great career and I have a gold medal I'm I'm very grateful <laughs> very very grateful I had an awesome career and I do believe my career is not over yet I have so much more to give and I look forward to finding out like what's what all can I do? Like, I want to take it up to another level. So I'm excited about that. I guess the next question would be, Michelle, what do you do when there's not an Olympics? Like, you just only train every four years? Are you only getting ready for the Olympic team? No, that's not how that works. <laughs> so I would say we do work in a four-year cycle since the Olympics is every four year. So I will go back to... It was 2016, yeah, 17, 18, 19, 20. 2017, the year after the Olympics, is World Championship. Then we have an off year where there's no major championship, but we still have a full track season with meets all over the world. And then we have 2019, where it's World Championships again, and then we have the Olympic year. And then it's like World Championship, Olympic, World Championship, off year. World Championship, Olympic, World Championship, off year. So we do work in a four-year cycle with, um, of course, the Olympics being one of the higher years. But for us, we see the same people and we compete against them quite often. It's just like a different name on the title of the meet. So... The same girls that you saw me compete against at the Olympic Games were the same girls I competed against the year before at World Championships. So it's a little different for us. Like I, I've been here, done that type of feel sometimes, and I try not to get caught up on that it's the Olympics so it's different. I look at it as the ring is still 7 feet 2 inches, my shot put still weighs 8.8 .8 pounds, 4 kilos, and I just threw against these girls two weeks ago. So, <laughs> I just wanted to put that extra pressure on myself. Otherwise, you would take yourself out the game before it even started. So, my next question is, Michelle, what advice do you give to new throwers? My advice that I would give to new throwers is, learn how to use your legs. Like, everybody thinks it's all about your arms. Like, no, you generate the power from your legs. And what I see with a, not, a lot of new throwers is they're not strong enough. Their legs are not strong enough to use them. And then if you're not strong enough in general, you are at higher risk for injury. So I would want you to start conditioning yourself. Start getting stronger. Like if you can't really quite lift weights and you're younger, I say like around junior high or younger, work on your lunges, work on your body squats, work on your push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups. Like, learn how to move your body. If you can't move your body well, you won't be able to throw the ball well because that's extra weight on top of your body. So, strengthen your body by using your own body weight. And when you're able to move your body well, 
Start adding on the weights. If you're in junior high, by the time you get to high school, you'll be able to handle it. You'll be in great shape. You'll feel good and you'll be able to move. And then with that, you'll be able to generate power from your legs, but to your hips, to your core, to your upper body, and to the shot foot. But, but always remember, it starts from the bottom up. All right. <laughs> My next question is, um, well, the next question is that I get all the time is why or how am I so confident? And it's always kind of weird sometimes hearing that question because at the end of the day, confidence is about how you feel about yourself or what do you believe about you? Actually, you know what I like to do? I like to look up the definition because the dictionary is a good thing. Like when you're not sure what a word means or um, you want to refresh it because sometimes in language when we're speaking to each other, I guess in slang sometimes and how we use our words in the English language doesn't really mean the actual definition of the word. So what I'm going to do is con fit. Listen, I'm not the best speller, but I do know how to spell this word. <laughs> so confidence, it's a noun and full trust, believe in the powers, trustworthiness, reliability of a person or thing. So it goes back to what I just said, like it's really believing in your abilities and how you feel about yourself. So do you fully trust yourself? Do you believe in your powers? Are you trust, trustworthy to yourself? Are you a reliable person to yourself? And I think that's so important because it starts with, can you even commit to brushing your teeth and washing your face every day? That's where confidence starts. It starts in the basic things, like things that we do every day that's just part of our routine. When you really go back and look at it, is helping you build confidence because when you're able to take care of yourself you start to feel good about yourself you start to trust yourself like when you get ready for work and you did your hair and your makeup and your outfits looking good like can't nobody tell you anything like you're ready to go but on that day when you're not feeling good and you're not dressed your best and you didn't really comb your hair that well you're not going to feel your best that day and i think that makes a big difference so I would say for those who are really, really struggling, just start taking care of your actual physical body and then see how you feel. So like brushing your teeth, washing your face, putting on your scarf for my sisters out there, put your scarf on before bed and take care of your hair. Um, just put, put your outfit together, maybe iron your shirt before you put it on. Um, making sure you put lotion all over your body like you want lotion on your face Well, you know moisturize over your face But you know moisturize your whole body from your fingertips to the bottom of your feet like take care of your body and then you start to feel better like it's amazing how self-care actually really builds your confidence because you're investing in yourself when you spend time on yourself um and another part of the definition when it says um, when you took a tr when blah, 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 blah. when it talks about trusting yourself, do you keep your promises you make to you? Like, can you trust you for you? I think that is so important. So, like, some small things that I do for me is I watch how I talk to myself because. Sometimes I can contradict myself. I can tell myself I'm pretty, but I'm like, oh, Michelle, you're so fat. Oh, my gosh, you look like this. All your skin is horrible. So how can I tell myself I'm pretty, but then tell myself myself these ugly things at the same time? Like, I'm contradicting myself. My mind don't know what to believe about me because I'm contradicting everything that I'm saying. I'm telling myself I'm ugly and I'm fat and I don't have this and I can't do this. But then I'm telling myself, oh, Michelle, you're pretty. Yes, you can. And my body, my, my mind, and my body is like, um, time out. Which one are we going for? So I want you to commit to yourself to speak life, speak positivity to you. 
Tell yourself what you can do and stop telling yourself what you can't do or what you don't like about yourself. Because when you start hearing the things that you don't like, you're going to really start believing and really trusting in those things and the things that you like, the things that you don't have, the things that you feel like you can't do. Why not invest in the things you know you can do? And the things you can't do, get some help for. And that will help build your confidence. And I guess another thing is this. Pick a goal and commit to it. Right now, I have a small goal that I have committed to for a whole month, and it's changing my whole environment, is I have committed to making my bed every single day. That's something I did not do. Like, I was like, what's the point of making my bed when I'm about to get right back in my bed? Like, there's no point. But... I was just like, you know what, I'm going to try it. Because people say it really makes a difference because I've been working on organizing and cleaning and getting myself together. So I started making my bed. And when my bed is made and my bed looks so nice, I'm looking around at everything else in my room. Oh, let me pick this up. Let me clean this up. Let me wipe this down. Let me do this. And it's transformed my room. My room don't stay dirty because my bed is clean. So my bed is clean and it's made up and it's looking pretty. Everything else needs to look pretty. And it's just kind of had this um, rollover effect in other areas in my house just by committing to making up my bed every single day. I know that's probably a better way that I can say that. I don't have it in my mind right now. But it's something when you commit to one thing for you, how it changes your outlook on many other things. So my challenge for you is speak positive to yourself for 30 days straight. Write down two or three sentences about you that you know that's true or you want to be true about you. And you speak it to yourself every single day. The Bible clearly talks about the power of death is in the power of your tongue. Oh, I did I say that right? That life or death is in the power of your tongue. Like, it's real. It's real. You see what happens when people speak to each other negatively and all the bullying and all the things we see on social media and what people are saying to people using their words and how it's affecting people. People are killing themselves because of things that they are saying to each other or saying to themselves. So my challenge for you is to speak positive to yourself for 30 days and you tell me how you feel. I would love to see and hear your comments and even show me and tell me what you're saying to yourself. So let me give you an example. I have on my board, um, next to my vision board is, um, I, I am beautiful. I am strong. Michelle, I am on time because I ain't gonna lie y'all. I have a problem with tardiness. I have, I am a champion. I am sexy. Why I put that on my board? I always, oh, I've always, never really considered myself sexy, but I want to be sexy for my husband. So I got to believe that I'm sexy, right? Because my husband thinks I'm sexy, but there's like, you know, I never viewed myself as sexy. I'm like, I'm a pretty beautiful girl, but I never put myself in the sexy category. But I do want to be sexy for my husband. And I believe I do have sexy moments. <laughs> but I do want to change my view about that and myself, that I can be sexy for my husband and for myself. Um... What's oh, another one I put on here? Um, girl, I can't see. Well, anyways, I can't see that far. I don't have them memorized. But I put up reminders around my house of things that I need to believe about myself. And we are fed so much positive negativity that we have to remind ourselves to be positive and um, it will change how you see yourself and when you change how you see yourself and you start seeing yourself the way that God sees you it will definitely change how you move about in the world it will definitely change because you will value you because God values you values you value you values you and for me the Bible is like the baseline for everything. So I'm not just telling you guys this stuff because it's like just good stuff to say. Like this stuff is in the Bible. In God's word. He tells us how to live our lives. And we already have a manual how to live. So why not use it? And it's full of great stuff. So if you are having a hard time with that, 
just Google it. Google Bible verses about certain things, Bible verses about confidence, or even people's commentaries or people's blogs about those things. And look at your notes and compare it, read it for yourself. Because you can always hear what people say, but you should read the word for yourself and get um, God's interpretation for you for it. And let's see how your life turned out. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what great things are you saying about yourself. And let me know how this video is making a difference for you. I would love to hear from you. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, 